Hi, welcome to Exploring the World Ocean. I'm Sean Chamberlain. In today's lecture, we're going to talk about the circulation of the ocean, both the wind-driven surface circulation and the thermohaline and mechanically mixed deep circulation of the ocean. The circulation of the ocean in many ways is just like our own circulatory system. Just as our heart and blood deliver nutrients and heat and oxygen to many different parts of our body, the ocean also delivers heat and nutrients and gases and many other things to all parts of the world. This ocean circulation is really important to Earth's climate, it's important to at atmospheric circulation, and it's also important to the productivity of the oceans as we will see. So let's take a look at some of the questions that oceanographers ask when studying the circulation of the world ocean. What are the patterns of the surface circulation of the world ocean? What drives the surface circulation? What are the patterns of the deep circulation of the world ocean? And what drives the deep circulation of the world ocean? And importantly, how are the surface and deep circulation of the ocean interconnected? How are they interrelated? How does the surface of circulation affect the deep circulation and vice versa? Well, in this chapter and in this book, we talk about what's called the world ocean circulation. And I want to take a few minutes to talk about that because it's a distinction that maybe is clear to oceanographers, but hasn't really trickled down to the average lay person. Traditionally, we've divided the circulation of the ocean up into the surface circulation, the sort of currents that move around on the surface of the ocean, and those are the ones we're most familiar with, and thought of the deep circulation, what goes on underneath the surface, as kind of a separate circulatory system. But as oceanographers have discovered and really in many ways realized for several decades, the surface circulation and the deep ocean circulation are one of the same thing. They're just two parts of a world ocean circulation. With the recognition that waters that form in the North Atlantic Ocean could be found in the North Pacific Ocean, with recognition that all the waters of the ocean intermix, really, which goes back to our theme of one world ocean, in the same kind of way we really have one circulatory system for the ocean. And in many ways, the distinctions between the two circulations, this sort of wind-driven surface circulation and the so-called thermohaline-driven deep circulation, those boundaries begin to break down as well when we start to consider more deeply and study more deeply the circulation of, of the world ocean. As it turns out, the surface circulation depends upon and influences the deep circulation and vice versa as well. And as it turns out, Wind is an important driving force for not only the surface circulation, but it also plays an important role in the deep circulation as well. So this little sidelight into world ocean circulation is mostly designed to get you thinking about the ocean circulating as a whole, rather than trying to divide it up into different parts and different ocean basins. And it's that distinction or that blending of the surface and deep ocean circulation that's an important contribution of modern oceanography and something that you may not find yet in some of the other textbooks that you read that actually separate out the surface and deep ocean circulation. So here we're putting it all together. So really what we define here is an interdependent surface circulation and deep circulation that we call the world ocean circulation. And as I said before, Historically, oceanographers have treated that surface circulation and deep circulation as different things. In fact, the surface circulation is sometimes called the wind-driven circulation, which gives importance to the, uh, <clears throat> the processes, wind-driven processes that generate surface currents. The deep circulation is also sometimes even still called the thermohaline circulation because of course temperature and salinity which affect seawater density and then in turn affect buoyancy and the layering of the water particles those things are important factors within the deep circulation but we now know that winds and other things also drive the deep circulation and we also know that thermohaline processes are important for surface circulation as well so it's just one big ocean and one big world ocean circulatory system and that's really the point here all right, we are going to continue to emphasize the importance of time and space because time and space also 
influence what we're what we understand or under, influence the processes and influence our understanding of the processes that contribute to the world ocean circulation again study figure 1.1 the figure in the inside front cover of your book we want to continue to return to that because our understanding of the surface circulation our understanding of the deep ocean circulation our understanding of world ocean circulation is one that is only achieved by making long-term measurements over many temporal scales and making measurements in many different places in the world ocean and in fact it's only in the recent decade as we've deployed over 3,000 little robots circulating uh, floating in the world ocean as we've deployed moorings and satellites and other kinds of instruments for measuring ocean circulation and the properties of the ocean that we've only now begun to get a fuzzy picture of what world ocean circulation is like. Well, even though I've just emphasized the importance of world ocean circulation, it does help and it does make it more clear if we separate the two and study them each uh, separately. So let's start with the surface circulation, the movements of water on the surface of the ocean. As we'll discover, even though we often present currents as nice little solid lines or slightly curved lines on our maps, as we've seen in some of the previous figures, the circulation or the movements of water in the surface of the ocean are extremely complex. So those long lines, those lines that we'll see on the map that depict the major ocean currents, they're really averages and really they're fact idealized averages. If you were to go out to the ocean in that particular place, you wouldn't necessarily be moved in the direction of the arrow. You might go backwards, you might go side to side, you might go in many different directions because in fact the circulation of the ocean is extremely complex. All you have to do is look at a flowing river and look at the little whirls and the whirls of water and the little eddies and the little movements of water to get some idea of how complex fluid flows can be. And so in talking about the surface circulation, we're going to make some generalizations about it and we're going to present some very broad averages and a broad model for how it works. But just realizing again that as with most things that we've talked about this semester, the details are more complex than the sort of broad overreaching generalizations that we present here. All right. One thing I really want to kind of emphasize here is that the surface circulation of the ocean is really like a freeway system with its interchanges, on-ramps, and exits, and we'll, we'll talk about that. And if you think about the surface circulation, it really was the very really first uh, need for, it, it presented the first need for applications of oceanography to everyday kinds of things. Knowledge of ocean current was, of course, very useful to people involved in trade, moving ships from Europe to America and back of course involved or uh, depended upon knowledge of ocean currents. Military operations of course are enhanced by a knowledge of currents. If you travel with the current you're going to get somewhere faster than if you travel against the current. All sorts of commercial activities and recreational activities and military activities and economic activities depend upon a knowledge of the surface circulation. So it's no surprise that one of the earliest sort of applications of oceanography and one of the earlier stimulus for oceanographic research had to do with discovering where the water goes, discovering something about the surface circulation.